A feel-good night here in Seattle. Lou Pinella back at Safeco Field. And tonight, entering the Mariners Hall of Fame. And he was absolutely fantastic. Welcome, everybody, to Root Sports Presentation of Mariner Baseball. As the Mariners get ready to take on the Chicago White Sox. Dave Sims along with Mike Flowers. Mike. I've seen a lot of these, been through a lot of these, yeah. as have you. It's one of the better ones I've seen. I thought Lou was simply magnificent tonight. Well, I would agree with you, and that's what I would expect from him. <laughs> I, I thought that he would lose it a little bit earlier yeah. in this one. You know, he had a lot of emotion yesterday at the luncheon, and you could see it at times here, but especially when he was talking to the fans, which is what I expected from him. So, But I thought he did an outstanding job and, and pretty much hit everybody on his list, and I thought it was a very nice ceremony. It was great to see the guys out on the field with him, now the eighth member of the Mariner Hall of Fame. Well, deserved yeah. and he gave you kudos too that i was so happy that, I was for you man and humbled by that yeah very that cool i mean i know you hold him in the highest regard as we do but well, you played for him for a lot of years no i do and, and if you talk to any of the guys that are here that have been around him they'll they'll say the exact same thing so yeah. it's very nice it was uh, really tremendous and yeah. meanwhile got a hot mariner ball club right now having won four in a row and feeling real good about itself in the, in the hitting department in addition to the outstanding pitching that we've seen to it, this point. It's been a really good home stand for them so far. And we all felt that this was going to be a, an important home stand. And they are hitting the ball out of the ballpark now. It's been good to see up and down the lineup getting a lot of production from guys. They have some hot hitters, of course, with Ackley in there. Morrison's starting to heat up. And, of course, Kyle Seeger has been on fire at this ballpark all year long and is starting to pay dividends in the run department. Aaron has come in with a record of 61-54 of last year at this time near 53-62. and 62. The latest in the wild card standings. They're the Mariners, a half game behind Kansas City. Well, and you have to feel good about that again with their pitching staff and the way that they play defense. Now they're scoring some runs. Uh, you know, 48 games to go for them. I think they're right in it, and I think they still have a chance to play some of these teams and do some damage to them if they can. And again, leaning on their pitching staff in that great bullpen, but score some runs, which is what they've been doing. More, more runs a game, Dave. Things work out pretty well Absolutely. for this club. Absolutely. I was talking to Logan Morrison last night. He said, if we can get one more, they just like you said, average one more than what they're doing right now. You never know. Hector Nowesi, the former Mariners on the mound tonight for the Chicago White Sox to be opposed by James Paxton, who showed some really good signs in Baltimore last week. Well, I thought James looked great in Baltimore. His fastball was around 95, 96 miles an hour. Showed the ability to throw the hard breaking ball, the big curveball. I don't think he was quite as sharp as you would expect him to be. I think he'll be better with that tonight. He had three walks in that outing. I think you'll see him get a little bit deeper in the game, but it's just great to have him back in the rotation. Absolutely, and they would like to get back at Nuessi, who threw a heck of a ball game back in early July when we were in Chicago. We've got fantastic weather for a great night. Lou Pinella, he'll join us in the fourth inning. Well-deserved honor as he goes into the Mariners Hall of Fame. Big crowd here at Safe Gold Field, and they were loving each and every minute, as did we. Mariner baseball coming your way after this timeout. It's the Mariners and the White Sox. First pitch is straight ahead. Great Mariner Hall of Famer, Dave Niehaus, the voice of the Mariners, would have loved being here tonight. Look at this glorious evening as we celebrate the accomplishments of Lou Pinella. There's 10-year tenure 
as manager of the Seattle Mariners as we welcome you to Mariner Baseball Game 3 of a four-game set against the Chicago White Sox. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, and the Root Sports crew. A little bit later about the fourth inning, Lou Pinella will be joining us here in the booth on this magnificent Saturday evening. Let's take a look at the White Sox batting order that will face young James Paxton. Okay, quickly leading off, it'll be Garcia, then Diaz, Abreu. You want to be careful with him, the DH tonight. 31 home runs on the year for him. Vicieto Ramirez. Canerco, the first baseman against the Mariners in his career. 300 hitter with 32 home runs. Flowers, Sierra, and Beckham rounding out the nine for Chicago. And for Paxton on the year, 2 0 record, 276 ERA. 18 strikeouts over the 16 and a third. Opponents hitting just 175. Well, here we go. Big left-hander into his wind and first pitch of the ball game. In there for a call. Strike one to Leori Garcia. Here's the 0-1 down low. On this beautiful night. Umpires for tonight's ball game. Mike Demuro's got balls and strikes. Marvin Hudson at first. Will be Basner at second and Hunter Wendelstadt at third. 78 degrees. They're saying the wind at two. But I've seen other things that said it's gusting up to 19 miles an hour as the wind blows across from foul pole to left field foul pole towards the right field foul pole. One and two to Garcia. Here's your wind guess. Knocked down what could have been a three home run night last night for Mike Zanino. Yeah, I was listening to Mike's comments after the game, and, and he said that one of them got in on him a little bit. He wasn't too sure about that one, but the other one he thought he hit pretty well, and the wind knocked it down. His home run that he did hit was out to right field. Ball's carrying a little bit better to right last night. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss. So Leori Garcia, who came over last August from Texas, is the strikeout victim. Here's the defense for the Mariners. Ackley in left field. Jackson getting the start out in center. Indy Chubb is your right fielder tonight. Kyle Seeger is at third base. Taylor and Cano playing up the middle. Kendrys Morales, normally the DH, he will be at first base. And Mike Zanino will do the catching. For Paxson, good fastball. He'll be 95 to 96 miles an hour. And, of course, that hard curveball and occasional changeup from Paxson. It's been said, I know you mentioned it, and it's an excellent point having him back now. This is his second start. It's like almost picking up a, you know, uh, a valued left-hander in a trade, having him coming back off the DL. I think you have to look at it that way, and I was thinking about it today, especially when Lou was going through his thing, and that's basically people point towards 95. That's what happened to us. Junior had the bad injury. We were without him for most of the years. This ball goes foul, and we ended up getting him back, and that's, that's kind of the same thing. That's the way it felt, and I think for Paxton. Uh, certainly helps his rotation out. And again, I think he'll start to get deeper. And the good news, I guess, if there is good news from injuries, is he hasn't put the innings on his arm this year, so he's ready to go. Full throttle, no doubt. 0 oh, 2. You could not ask for a better setup. The weather cooperating to the max. Good crowd here to honor Lou Pinella. 35,000 plus might even get close to 40. Well, the fans were great. Much love. Yes. Swing and a miss. Zanino looking for it. Takes his time. Throws down to Morales at first base and retires Diaz. Well, a couple of strikeouts for James Paxson to start the game. And with these White Sox, they've had some issues with that over the course of the summer. You can see the most strikeouts in the American League in Chicago. Second behind Houston. And already two quick strikeouts for Paxton. This will bring up the formidable Jose Abreu, American League leader in home runs, RBIs, and slugging. For James, his first outing was against Baltimore. Four and a third, four hits, just four hits. He did walk three batters, had five strikeouts. Mike DeMuro, home plate umpire. I don't know, maybe. I wonder what happened. I know well, there's been occasion that sometimes when the catcher's discarding his uh, mask. Sometimes gets up under the mask and yeah. will hit you in the neck. And you have the chest protector, but there is a little bit of gap. Let's see. So it goes off a of mic. He What's never even, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah he yeah. never saw it. Yeah. Up and under. <laughs> Somebody just threw a water bottle out of the Mariner dugout for Demuro. Drake Griffin. Under Wendell step and a hand it to him. 
you ever played football and somebody close lines yeah that's a <laughs> similar type of deal and it, it's not good yeah I don't know if he's ready to, to yuck it up with Rick Griffin but <laughs> he's trying to recover as quickly as he can tell you what you got to be a tough guy to be behind the be behind the plate every four days. Wow, we talk about it with the catchers all the time, and Mike Zanino and all the shots that he takes. Yep. Zucre when he gets the opportunity to play, <laughs> but we have to remember the umpires are right behind him, and they get hit quite a bit. And the thing about it is, the catchers are preparing themselves typically when they're block blocking the ball and they're ready for it. Umpires, not really. And on that one, he never really saw it. They I mean, it's saw like it. it came out of a, out of nowhere. I, I don't think he expected to get hit by it. So here's Abreu, a 302 hitter, 31 homers, 86 runs batted in. Star in Cuba. A big signee by the White Sox for this season. He went one for four last night and 0 for two. Hit twice in Thursday's game. Baxson started. Two games in April against the Angels. One there, one here. Then went on the DL with a strained left lat muscle injury. That is a foul ball. And a late swing on a good fastball right on the inside corner. It's one of the things that's unusual about Abreu, even though he's a power hitter, he's a good hitter. He'll use the entire field. He'll let the ball get deep. Here's the one two swing wow. tag applied by Zanino and a rousing start for James Paxton striking out the side on 13 pitches as we honor Lou Pinella Mariners coming to bat. Tonight is the night we honor Lou Pinella, eighth member of the Mariners Hall of Fame. And you want to talk about some memories from some great times here in Seattle. One of the great sports personalities, not only in Seattle, but nationwide. Highly regarded baseball man, 14th all time among managers in wins on your all time list. And 12 of the 13 guys ahead of him are in the Hall of Fame. Hector Noesi. First pitch, Jackson. Fly ball, right field, battling the son of Sierra, and he wins it. One down. Here's a look at the rest of the Mariner batting order. Tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Chevron. Following Jackson, it will be Dustin Ashley. What a hot hitter he has been. Then it is Cano, Morales, Seeger. Zanino with a home run last night. 18 home runs on the year now for Zanino hitting six. Morrison, Chris Taylor, 385 average. Hit safely in all 10 of his starts. And Andy Chavez runs out, rounds out the nine for the Mariners. Here's Dustin Ackley. He looks at a strike. The Ack attack, 354 over his last 20 games. Missed some damage, four home runs mm -hmm. in his last seven. 
milestone one nothing loss to Noesi and the White Sox back on the 6th of July. Taiwan Walker remember that through a lot I of do. pitches. Early on. This one popped up playable going back is Ramirez. And that was a game where the White Sox scored on a wild pitch you easily could have called it a fast ball by John Buck. The defense for the White Sox this and left Diazza in center Sierra out and right Garcia the third baseman Ramirez and Beckham playing up the middle. The veteran Paul Canerco at first base and Tyler Flowers will do the catching tonight for Chicago. For Nwesi, we know that he has good stuff. His fastball will be 94 to 96 miles an hour, a hard breaking ball. Look at his overall numbers this year. And Dave, you were talking about the game he threw against the Mariners where he pitched extremely well, was throwing a lot of strikes. At times he can get wild, and his numbers reflect that. Right now, Nwesi is going to face the number one hitter in the American League, Robinson Cano. 335. Lloyd McClendon. After that game back in Chicago and he reiterated again here today. What's the key as we look at. Cano slight edge over Altuve who slumped over the last day or two. What do you have to do to beat Noes he said swing it strikes so we didn't help our cause that was one of our worst offensive performances against him. I got nothing against uh, Noes but if we played without lumber we could have won that game. <laughs> well. I can understand and appreciate that, but he has good stuff. You have to give him credit for that, and that's the reason why so many clubs have tried to hang in there with him with the Yankees and, of course, the Mariners and now the White Sox. Texas earlier. The Texas earlier. A field easy play for Viciato, who, we, who we've seen over the last two nights hit opposite field home runs. He's somebody to contend with. Good start for Noesi. Seven pitches to get through the first inning. Second inning, Lou Pinella, his night tonight into the Mariners Hall of Fame, and that looks like maybe reminiscent of his days in Cincinnati when he wore number 41. The hunt for the postseason heats up this Monday when the Mariners host the Blue Jays in the biggest three-game series of the season thus far. It's safe go field Monday. King Felix on the mound at 7-10 and the first 30,000 fans to receive a yellow K cloth to wave over their head as the Mariners and their ace battle the Blue Jays. Visit Mariners.com. For tickets and to let's fill these safe go field seats as the postseason chase intensifies. Here's a look at what the folks are going to be uh, showing, uh, waving. I'll show you this towel. As Felix hangs out. There we go. This is one of the things you're going to get. I feel like I'm on uh, the Home Shopping Network. Hey, if you act there. There's a ball hit to center field. Viciato is retired. Century Link link to what's next coming up in that Toronto series. Drew Hutchinson against Felix Hernandez, Jay Happa against Chris Young, and R.A. Dickey against Sashi Iwakuma. <laughs> Good pitching matchups there. And a big series for the Mariners. The Blue Jays a game and a half back, the Mariners a half a game out. 
One down is Alexei Ramirez first appearance since getting his knee buckled last night. Dave Winfield the Hall of Famer even tweeted. After seeing Alexei uh, fall victim to that incredible pitch by Uribis Medina. Last evening. So we call that jelly leg back in my day. <laughs> I think it was more than that he ended up on the ground didn't he. <laughs> it was a major collapse. Everybody, I mean, that was in every highlight clip in, in North America. I ask Ken about it. Have you ever seen anybody, you know, have a just have a just a complete collapse at the plate like that? And it's no. And Zanino was talking to him. He, he mentioned the same thing you did about he's such a diver, and he attacks that first pitch. Frank, so he was, he's thinking he's coming back with a, he's going to get a fastball at some point, and that count didn't happen. Well, he ended up getting a couple of fastballs early in the count, which surprised that he took them. And then here comes the breaking ball. And I, I think again for Medina, he was trying to throw that pitch away, ended up leaving it inside. And so when it came out of his hand, it looked like it was right at Ramirez. Yeah. And that's what buckled him. He was 0 2 at that point. This is for the uh, third out and eighth inning last evening. Here's Paul Kernerko. Drive on one hopper. And Cano perfectly placed. Seven pitches. Paxton off to a really good start through two. Field. Beautiful evening. Lou Pinella going into the Mariners Hall of Fame. This is one of the great <laughs> moments from his time. Ken Griffey Jr. got him, didn't he? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and Carl Hamilton had the video, it right? He's in the. Yeah, he's Carl in the, Hamilton, yeah. And he couldn't get out for a while. Well, look at him. Where's he going to go? <laughs> he's on the other side of it. <laughs> I, I think, from what I can remember, they, they had they had some sort of bet about a steak dinner. Right. And Junior ended up losing the bet, so he paid it off with the entire cow. As only he would. Yeah. Junior not here tonight because he's going into the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame as we speak. Actually, about two hours ago. Here's Kendris Morales. He's at first base tonight. Randy Johnson had USO commitments. That's why he couldn't make it this evening. But Lou talked about both of those guys and their roles and the success of the Mariners during Lou's tenure. 0 2 here to Morales in a weak swing. He got full tag applied by Flowers and there's one down. This looks like a split from Noesi. Take a look at it. 
Up, down out of the strike zone 88 miles an hour his fastball will be 94 95 in that area and that pitch 88. First strikeout for Hector. It's interesting for Nuesi. I always figured that it would be tougher on the right handers but this year right handers hitting 304 against him left he's just 222. Yeah. About the 222, then the 10 home runs. You see that? Yeah, it's uh. Well, we know he, he's tough to figure out. <laughs> well said. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to the Thanks, chase, thank Mike. Yeah. <laughs> what a hole. You get so, line, you're well, in that long line of pitching coaches, yeah, right? Just a source of frustration at times, again, because he has such a good arm. Uh, and he comes into the game today with a 4.97 ERA. Uh, just too many mistakes in the middle of the plate. We've heard that before. He can get ahead of hitters and typically had a tough time putting them away, and his numbers reflect that this year. Boy, that was a huge theme last year. Yeah. So, but the White Sox are giving him a chance to start every fifth day. Two one to Seeger. Popped up out of play. Two and two. Again, Luke Pinella will be joining us in the fourth inning. Here in the booth, we look forward to that visit. Mariners have won four consecutive games. The White Sox going in the other direction. They've lost four. Tough run here for Robin Ventura's ball club in a huge hitting slump during this last four games, hitting just a buck 95. 2 2 here to Seeger. Take a look at the wild card chase and keep you up to speed on that. Toronto is already in the books with the win. They beat Detroit 3 2. Cleveland won at the Yankees 3 0. The Kluber kid, six strong innings again. He's been good. I think he had 10 strikeouts in that one. He is a very talented again, right handed. 2 2. And the good news for the Mariners, the Yankees have lost. That was the Kluber game. Yeah, that three yeah. nothing in that yeah. one. And then he got San Francisco trailing bottom eight at KC. Billy Butler, another home run. Five nothing Royals. What got into them? Bouncing ball to Ramirez. Six three. That was in the shift. Two outs. Catch a great weekend of baseball. Felix Robinson Cano, the Mariners take on the Nationals and their young stars, Bryce Harper and Steven Strasburg, in a rare interleague matchup at Safeco Field. All kicks off Friday, August 29th. Get your tickets now at Mariners.com. Remember, we saw Kansas City, they made the run at Detroit. Then we, I think the Mariners went in there, got them. Uh, they fell back, and now here they are right back in the race here. Two and a half back starting today when behind the, Detroit. When the Mariners went into Kansas City, Kansas City was one of the hottest teams in the American League. And the Mariners were able to take care of business. But you're right, they have to have it turned around. It's a talented club. We knew that. Good bullpen. Yep. Here's Mike Zanino. As you know, there you go, catcher. He is leading among American League catchers 18 home runs. He's batted in the six, seven, eight, and nine spots during the course of the season so far. So did you know? So most home runs hit from those positions. Anybody in Major League Baseball. Anybody's been in those four spots. Well, you get the feeling watching him and again his home runs that there's nothing cheap about him when he, when he touches them off. They're usually pretty deep into the stands, but as he starts to grow as a hitter and develop at this level with the kind of power he has, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in a cleanup spot. Yeah, I can see that happen. Strikes out here as both the Wesley and Paxton have gone six up, six down. No score on the night. Lou Pinella goes into the Mariners Hall of Fame.
for Lou Pinella. Don't forget, an outstanding player. 291 career batting average. A uh, disciple of the late, great Charlie Lau, who was a longtime hitting coach in uh, Kansas City, rookie of the year in the AL. Central casting looks. Got the whole package. He can hit. And his uh, batting average, the runners in scoring position was pretty high. He was a good, good clutch hitter. 77 78 Yankee ball clubs that won the World Series. There's Tyler Flowers, the catcher. The White Sox leading off. I think he had of those 18 years, I think four or five of them he had over 300, including one that was 330 plus. Yeah, led the league in doubles uh, once. Yeah. 291 career batting average. Good stuff. What about Paxton? Struck out the side in the first. 13 pitches, seven pitches to retire the side in the second, and now he's ahead 0 2 here to Flowers. Good pitch. One and two. A couple three. Eh, I guess about two Wednesdays ago we were here. And maybe it was on the road. I can't remember which one, but he just popped in. The, it was over in Cleveland. That's what it was. And he had just thrown a bullpen. Breaking ball. Taylor stays with it. Got him. Nice play. Chris Taylor. <laughs> Man, that was nice. He hangs with him. Pick up the first out. Well, that's the key. Never takes his eye off the ball and stays with it. Tough hop goes off the heel of his glove, and you can see him follow the baseball. No panic at all. Part of the luxury of having a plus throwing arm. Once you get it to quick spin and a strong throw across the diamond to get Flowers by a step. Good play. That was really good. But Paxton enjoying his face. I'm good to go. He just threw that last bullpen. I am good to go. Let's do it. Well, he's shown it so far. And again, his first outing probably wasn't as sharp as he wanted to be, but we expected with a series of bullpens in between that he would be sharper tonight than he has been so far. Like 26 watch, pitches, 17 strikes. It's like watching the Olympics, Mike, and gymnastics. You throw out the high and the low. Uh, you do. Yeah, good point. 1-1. One, one. Seager charges. Two away. Good footwork by Morales over at first base. A bobblehead sweepstakes winner tonight is from Silverdale, Christian. Okay. <laughs> There's no money in it. It's just a bobblehead. Come on. <laughs> Christian Dominguez, congratulations. Oh, it's a junior bobblehead. Oh, okay. All right. It's a couple woo hoos, a couple woo woos. <laughs> 27 pitches, eight outs for Paxton. I've not seen him today, but I'd like to see the smile on the face of Mr. Zerensic right now, the GM, he and his staff, because they got to be loving this. Paxton back, nine up, nine down. Not bad at all. He's on top of his game early on. He just needed eight pitches in the third.
Wishes to Wilma Turner, who is a vibrant and young, 103 years old today. William Howard Taft was president when she was born. Wow. Wow, yeah. Great to see her out at the ballpark. It's great. That is outstanding. 103 years old. God bless you. That is tremendous. Here's Logan Morris, a nine game hitting streak for Lomo. Swinging the bat well. 3.23 average over the nine games. Here's the 1 0 from Noesi. He had a home run in the first game of the series. It was a big three run home run. The Mariners had, were losing at the time, and he put them out in front, a game that they eventually won. Good attitude adjuster, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and again, I think the following night he had a double to drive in another run. I think that was a big because I believe he was over three going into that at bat. So another good at bat for him. Coming in hard is Diaz to make the play. But the Wessies retired the first seven. Paxton's retired the first nine. Up next is Chris Taylor. Aaron a shortstop, four game hitting streak for him. 11th start, 14th game. Well, as we mentioned, right handers hitting 304 against Noesi, and he likes his fastball. He's proud of it. And Chris Taylor likes to hit the fastball. He's typically aggressive on the fastball early in the count. This would be a good matchup for him. Strike one. What a night for Chris last evening. Three for four. Three consecutive singles. Grounded out in his fourth at bat. Second baseman Beckham. Route number two. That's what we love about baseball. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> we didn't see it coming in Chicago either. Right? But right? Hector has a good fastball again tonight. He's at 95 miles an hour. He's been able to locate it. That last pitch in on the hands of Taylor. Really hasn't had to use his breaking ball much. He's thrown a couple of splits, and that's been it. A lot of fastballs, and he has a good one. Andy Chavez. Andy looking to break an 0 for 5 against Hector. So Lou Pinnell on the thoughts and parts of folks here in Seattle. Well, they should be as he goes into the Mariner Hall of Fame tonight, the eighth member. See Alvin Davis, Alan Niehaus here, Edgar Martinez, Jay Buner, Dan Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I know where you're going. <laughs> I think when he's done with his responsibility and making his rounds today, he may just take Edgar up on it. He, he may go out there. If you're just joining us during his <laughs> remarks, as Lou is thanking people, he's thanking Ed for Edgar for all his accomplishments and his contributions. He said, "Hey, when it's all over, go out and get a couple of cold ones." <laughs> Fans out there liked it. That was great. Two and two. My what goodness. Oh. Man, both starters on fire. Nine up, nine down. What a start to this ball game.
Sports crew. Some of the accolades for Mr. Pinella, manager of the Mariners here from 93 to 02. Playoffs four times. Manager of the year twice. Team leader, 840 wins. He's 14th all time in his career. Seven winning seasons and three times to the AL Championship Series. Louie Louie indeed. Meanwhile, how about this ball game we have here? Both pitchers, Paxton and Noesi, have both gone nine up and nine down. Top the order, Yuri Garcia. Came over from Texas last year. He was the player to be named later when Alex Rios was moved on. Taylor charges. Well, the 10 outs that he has recorded, only one of them there. Three strikeouts, one fly out, and the rest on the ground. A good sign from James Pack. And we talked about big fastball at 95, 96 miles an hour and the hard curveball from him. But he also has that steep angle. We've talked about his throwing motion up over the top, throwing downhill. And when he's on, typically you will see a lot of ground ball outs. One out here in the fourth. With Diaz struck out his first time. Keep the eyes off the base pass. It's 14 stolen bases on the top seven times. One on one. Swinging butt. Zanino's on it. And he'll hold on. And that's base the first hit. base hit of the ball game. How about that. Went about 15 feet. Well, let's take a look at it. He starts running into it. Look well, at this. A little butcher boy. And again, it barely stays up the line and stays fair. And I think Zanino makes the right choice by not throwing this. It's a high breaking ball, slow breaking ball. Mike thought about maybe throwing it underhand, but that wouldn't have been able to get it done again. You can see where he feel maybe 15 feet down the line is all it went. First base runner. And uh, that looks like your high end softball action here. Running up in the box. Well, he guessed right because it was an off speed pitch. I think he would have been in trouble if that had been a good fastball inside. That's an excellent point. Yep. Guessed right. I can eat you up here with a little movement on late action. <laughs> I've been right in the middle of his chest. Mm -hmm. Medic. That's amazing. I, I've seen Junior do that a few times mm -hmm. in his career. And I, I know one time for sure. I think it was in the Kingdom. I saw him hit a home run doing that. Believe it or not. Stop. Yeah. He was moving his feet. Can't remember who the pitcher was. It was somebody that fit through a lot of changeups, right. and everybody was out in front. So right. as the pitcher started his motion, he just walked up to it and hit it out of the ballpark. Nice. Oh and two here to Abreu, home run, RBI, and slugging leader in the American League. Way late. That's that's a serious talent to be able to. I mean, it's, the recognition's outstanding, but the, to want to do it, execute it, and get it done is remarkable. Well, I've never seen anybody else do it. I've never seen anybody else do it. Yeah. Well, off the fist, Paxton into Cano, turn the double play. That'll get it done. A good night here for the Mariners. Saws off a power hitter in a bray and they get a twin killing.
going into the Mariners Hall of Fame tonight as we relive some of the real entertain, entertaining moments of Vince <laughs> Coleman. There, oh, here he comes now. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Lou. Yeah, great you job, betcha. Lou. Congratulations. That was really well done. Here's Austin Jackson. 95's mantra right there. Refused to lose. Lou Pinella joining us here in the booth. Dave Sims and Mike Flowers. Well done. Seriously, well done. I was nervous. I was nervous, Dave. I really was. But, uh, you know, I got through it and uh, I had a nice time doing it. I spoke from the heart. Good. I was so blessed here. Uh, the players I had, uh, the front office that I worked with, the fans. Uh, these fans here in Seattle are sucking than Mike or none, Mike. They yeah. really are. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful fans. And this ballpark here, you know, it's still the nicest ballpark in the big leagues. You had a big part in getting that thing built here. Luke. Well, you know, uh, yeah, but a manager is a cog. You've got to have all these other pieces together. And, you know, I found out after I left here. But if you don't have talent, it's, <laughs> it's hard to win. So, yeah, I, I, I thank all the players. I, I really do. I, I I had so many great ones. And, and and the amazing thing about it is that I recognize when I came here in 93 that, yeah, there were some challenges ahead, but that there was a lot of talent here to work with. And if we could get everybody working in the same direction, and put winning as a priority that it wouldn't be too long before uh, uh, before this this organization tasted success. I, I can remember in 93 your first spring training which I was there and been a part of it and you talk about winning and changing the, basically the culture of what had yes. been going on. Yes. You did that immediately in spring training. Well, I've never seen anybody that wanted to win a spring training game as bad as you. Well, <laughs> and, I, and I know you had a purpose for that that, that year. It was a, a purpose. Yeah. You know the team had lost 98 games a year before. You want to build, start building some confidence in spring training leading up to the season. Now, the amazing thing about it is that first year we had no home ballpark to right. play in. Ackley gives it a good ride center field. He has it puts it away. Too. We played all our games on the road, and we started out 0 and 9. Mm. Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> I remember we were going to Chandler, Arizona, and I had to stay back behind with Woody because we were going to start making our first cuts. And Sammy and Ellis and I were going to ride together to Chandler. We passed by the Phoenix airport, and I said, Sam, maybe you can drop me off over there, <laughs> and I can take an early trip home. I said, what did I get myself into here? <laughs> well, you, you, you've been very humble yesterday in the lunch and, and today, and thank you for mentioning my name. Oh, Annette. please. But it's well deserved. The one thing that I've always said to people is, yeah, you need talent. You had some great players, and you mentioned them all today, some of them sitting behind you. But I, I think that one of the things you do the best is recognizing talent but getting other players. I know for myself my best years were for you. You had Doug Strange and Richie Amaral. The, the pieces that you need to help you along the way, and you always got the most out of those guys. Well, you know, I... I Myself I, included. Well, I had some very good mentors in uh, uh, along the way in the minor leagues. Also, uh, uh, at the major league level, uh, I played some, for some very, very good managers, and I was able uh, to DH a little bit towards the end of my career so I could really notice, see what these guys were doing. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, the, 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 the good thing, too, is, and, and, and you can attest to this, our coaching staff here was second to none. Yeah, I agree. Uh, these guys could teach. Uh, they can motivate. They could lead. I gave them all the uh, rope that they needed to do their jobs, and they did a heck of a job for me. So, hey, look, you get the general managers, the coaches, the players, and hell, the managers just sits and, and rides uh, easy well. street. Huh? <laughs> hey, you mentioned influence, and I asked Mike this earlier. Who is it in terms of your managerial work? Who was the biggest influence? Billy yeah, Martin. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, Billy. Uh, I learned a lot of things from Billy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had some fun with the umpires, too. In fact, you know, today, the only thing I forgot was an umpire story. Uh, and, and the reason being, it was so ironic. When I walked into the ballpark today around 3.30, quarter to 4, three of my umpire comrades really? were walking in with me. Oh, great. So they they uh, uh, were very kind and, and congratulated me on, on, on the enshrinement. Uh, and uh, I said, you know, 
do you all mind if I tell a, a nice umpire story today? <laughs> they said, sure. I forgot. I was out there long enough anyway. You did a great <laughs> job. I, Thank I know, you. I know that you told me yesterday you were going to be nervous. So yes. I knew that you would, but who wouldn't be? Um, but I, I know that you were also going to be very emotional. And you did a great job of getting through it. Yeah, I Until got you through got to it. the fans. Got the, fans to the fans were the tough ones. Well, you know, the fans. I mean, look, I, one of the things I was proudest of, yeah, we won some divisions. Yeah, we won some some uh, 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 playoff games. Uh, yeah, this ballpark was built. But you know what? We, we what do you call it? We uh, led the majors in attendance here. Yeah. Two or three years right. uh, in Seattle. Uh, that's something to be very, very proud of. And Absolutely. the fans made it possible. You know, you put people in the, in, in the stands, the, 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 you have more energy on the field. Uh, you're you're going to play better baseball, and it's going to be more fun. And at the same time, it's going to be very difficult for opposing teams to come in here and play. So you, you've got to thank the fans for the success that we had. And yeah. I did. Yeah, and there's a lot of you see you put all those banners up there. It was a lot of fun. And some good teams. That, that 2001 team was My special. My God, Mike, it was special. It really was. Uh, you know, the amazing thing is we had lost Junior. We had lost Alex. We had lost Randy. Right. And Pat Gillick that year was a master at putting the team together. And... It's a base hit by Morales as Cano is on the move. He's headed to third. He's going to get there. So the Boy. Mariners with two outs have runners at the corners. I love to see hitters go to the opposite field. I know especially, you do. <laughs> especially when there's a shift on. I don't understand you, you're not why fan. major league hitters don't do that more often. I, I really either. don't. You don't either, right? No, I don't. I don't. And I see it. I see it. In the Seattle games, I see it in the Tampa Bay games, I see it in the Baltimore games, the games on the East Coast, in the National League. I don't understand why hitters just don't take a shot that way. And if they did, they'd get better pitches to hit, and they would have to spread the defense a little more. But they try to hit through this shift, and there was only one guy ever in the history of baseball that could hit through the shift, and that was Ted Williams. Teddy there aren't too many Ted Williams around, right? Right, absolutely not. Well, I, I think you look at this club with Cano in the year that he's having, they don't shift on him. Right, he slaps that, or he's, he, he doesn't slap it. He stings that ball to left field. Right. And uh, there you go. Sinker down the line. That'll get a run in. Cano, he scores. Morales to third. Seeger into second with an RBI double. one nothing Mariners. As he salutes the boys out in the bullpen. Well, you like to see good hitting with two outs, don't you? You do, and he's been the clutch guy. He leads the club in RBIs. And over his first three years, Lou, he has, he has really come a long way and solidified himself. You take a look at this swing right here. What do you like about this swing, Lou? Well, I'll tell you what. He's short and compact. He stays right on top of this ball and just drills it the right field. His head was out nice and down. He didn't pull off. Just a good piece of hitting. Three straight two out base runners for the Mariners here in the fourth. And that brings up Mike Zanino. Chance to pick up two more. Do you you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that I like more than to see good hitting. Yeah. I love to see good hitting. I really do. I loved your, uh, your, your comments when you were going down the list of the guys and you got to Edgar. And one I agree, the greatest right hitter I've ever oh, seen or God. played with. But the, you, you mentioned it. Letting the ball get deep and staying inside the ball better inside than anybody. Inside the ball. And, and, and I'll tell you what, I've, I've seen Edgar hit balls down the left field line that the normal hitter, the ball would hook foul. His ball actually worked its way on the playing field. It was the darnest thing I've ever seen. And he stayed on it so long and he stayed inside of it so long. And great way to hit. Charlie Lau, big influence on you, right? Charlie Lau is a great influence on me, yes, no question. I mean, he was probably the first of what you would classify as the premier hitting coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and he basically taught weight shift. He taught staying inside the ball. And he, he taught hitting into the alleys, left center, right center. And uh, good approach. Yeah. Good approach. Two and one here to Zanino. Did you uh, make your way to any of the restaurants in town that you've been missing for a few years? Oh, yeah. Listen, uh, I, I, I like <laughs> I love food. Yeah, I really do. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go white water rafting up you in are. the uh, Cascades. Good for you. And then uh, on Monday we're going to uh, go out with uh, John Ellis on, on his boat and, and enjoy the beautiful scenery on Lake Washington. I'm also going fishing for salmon, so it'll be a full okay. day, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, but the restaurants, I love the food here. I love the seafood. Right. Uh, and and uh, 
uh, tomorrow night. Uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Last night we had a wonderful, wonderful dinner also. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, uh, the, the, the seafood here in this town second to none. Yeah. Lloyd said when he's free, he'll go 60, 70 miles out with him. Remember yesterday, you couldn't get anybody to go out and go out to Florida. He said, I'm a little busy I'm right sure now. I'm sure he'll come out. I'm <laughs> sure Mike will come out. Yeah, yeah we, we, we go out and catch grouper. We go out and catch uh, dolphin, mahi-mahi. We go out and catch uh, kingfish. Uh, we go out and catch um, tuna. Uh, and and uh, we hire a captain, so it's nice and safe. All right. So good. we can have a couple nice margaritas or, or a nice cerveza or whatever we want you got and enjoy it the day. Yeah, we got it covered. And we catch fish. Yeah, good. I mean, we really catch fish. It's uh, I mean, We go out uh, two or three times a month. And, and you know, at times when you're retired, you're, it's hard to find people uh, <laughs> you were to do me things that with. Yesterday. Yeah, it really is. I, 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 it, it, that's been a little bit surprising to me. <laughs> and you're playing golf. You play some golf. I play some golf. My handicap hasn't gotten much better, Mike. I'm still about a 12 or so. That's good. Yeah, I hit the ball okay. I, I played last weekend in uh, Sarasota at this place called Concessions. Right. Really nice course. And. Uh, the, the members over there wanted to play back, and I swung a little bit too hard, and by the 17th hole, I was done. <laughs> well, how are you not in charge of that group? You need to move those guys up. I need to play the white tees. Yeah, right? that's, that's fair. And and, and have three-foot gimmies. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're staying active. You look great, Lou. Thank it's you. good to see you back in town. Thank and you. you. And you just look terrific, and you nailed it today. I knew you would. Everybody I was talking to, I said, hey, he, I know he's nervous about it, but he, he's absolutely going to nail it. And I love the reception Thank that you. you got. How long those people stand on their feet for you today? Oh, it was a long time. And I, I was so grateful. I really was so grateful and, and, and so humbled. Uh, uh, what a what a wonderful night. I, I'll never forget this night. I really won't. And, uh, you know, but I, I have so many great memories here in, uh, uh, of, 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 of Seattle, the Kingdome, uh, this ballpark here, uh, the players. That, that's what made today special. I had a lot of guys that I hadn't seen in, 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 yeah. in quite a while. That, 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 that makes it so special, too. You know, look, the, the award, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm thrilled to death. But, boy, seeing everybody and, and being able to say thank you, yeah. oh, boy, that, that's special to me. You got a happy birthday coming up. I want to be. We'll uh, wish you early happy birthday. Uh, end, of end of end August. End of August. End of happy August. birthday to you. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. End of August. Uh, for you. 71 years old. Looking How about good. that? Looking well, good. I, I've got news for you, by the way. You, when you were talking in your in your speech and you mentioned Edgar and then going out to the cantina. cantina. And you can do that when you're done making your rounds. But I promise you, birthday or not, you will not have to buy a drink out there today. Somebody <laughs> will take that. care of that for you, Lou. I love that. Lou, thanks so much. Thank God you. Bless. God, God bless. bless. Happy Both birthday. You. Thank you. Great thanks to see so you. Much. Thanks, thanks, Lou. Congratulations. Thank Great you. Great Lou Pinella joining us here in the booth as the Mariners take an early lead here against the White Sox.
just left the booth here. And let's look at some moments. Look at him hit that high fastball in the World Series. I believe that was 78 against the Dodgers. Roy White scores to win that ball game. Reggie Jackson with the big hug. Hmm. Thurman Munson. There's Lou at Yankee Stadium. On the road here, that looks like at Kansas City. He could hit again, a 291 career hitter. And led the league in doubles one year with 33. I'll never forget, Dave. And you, you may have been at the ballpark, but the first time that we went in in '93, when Lou was managing this club mm -hmm. his first year, and the first time, and I, and I knew Lou was a great player and, and won a couple of championships with the Yankees and done a lot there right. and all of that stuff, especially since I, I broke into the big leagues with the Yankees. But when we went there in '93 the first time, that's when it hit me how. Big of a personality he was in New York City and those people there because even though he was on the opposing side if he came out of the dugout for any reason it was Lou, Lou. All, all over yes. that stadium in New York even though he was managing the Mariners right. at the time very he, popular and, and they love seeing him come back to town mid late 70s he's, he's as big a personality he's a big personality in New York as Cano throws out Viciato. Everywhere, everywhere, and you mentioned it earlier. Everywhere in the country, really. Oh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I can remember we were having it. We were in Boston, and, and we were having a tough time getting in the airport. They had road closures, and I don't know if they had a marathon or something going on. And and Craig Detweiler, who was our traveling secretary at the time, was trying to figure out how to get us in because everything was blocked off, barricaded off, and we right. went round this circle about three times. And Lou finally tells the bus driver hey bus he stopped the bus and here he comes he gets off the bus and all the policemen that are sitting out there guarding everything as soon as he came off the bus Lou <laughs> barricades open in we go no problem Lou Pinello. <laughs> base hit center field second hit for the White Sox that's Alexi Ramirez checking in one with one and some memorabilia from Lou's Yankee days you know, with that World Series in 90, his accomplishments here, his accomplishments as a player, he's got to go in the Hall of Fame. Come on. And managing in Cincinnati. And man, that's Series. what I'm saying. Yeah. In 1990, yeah. Yep. No, I, I think so. We'll talk about that voting procedure in tomorrow's pregame show. How uh, managers are selected in the Hall of Fame. Here's Paul Kernerko. Grounded out to Cano. Strike one. Paxton retired the first 10 men that he faced, gave up a, a swinging run through the box bunt for uh, Diaz, and then a double play got him out of the fourth. Tell you something else about him. He's very humble. He's right. He had some great players, and he's, he's one of the best managers I've ever been around. But I think one of the biggest things for him, and, and there's certain people that have it for a variety of reasons, I guess. Runner goes, throw down the second. Nobody covered. So a stolen base for Ramirez is 18th in 22 attempts. But we, we heard it a number of times yesterday. You, you, he has a presence, and he, you know when he's in the room. Uh, and I don't care what room he's walking into and that has an effect on the guys that he's managing. Yeah, I've seen you know been lucky enough to be in this business a long time. And I've seen other guys. Yeah, they don't come there. They don't come in big bunches and you can feel the temperature in the room change when it comes in and for the best for the best. I, I mean, I, I remember being in a Jets New York Jets function and Namath came in and on the Josie Josie. Only got Josie. Hey, where is he? Hey, I'm too. <laughs> Lose the same way. Yeah, he is. That that is a that is a super high compliment. Paxton with one out runner at second, a two two count coming to, to the always dangerous Paul Konerko. Well, Konerko, look what he's done against the Mariners in 127 games, Mike, and we've seen a lot of that in Chicago. Most of it in Chicago, but enough here. 
He's been really something in it's more than like his last year. Great career. Two and two. I can remember Paul, and he probably doesn't remember it, but back, all the way back in '96, right when I was with the Dodgers in camp with the Dodgers, and he was a young third baseman back then. I think he was in Double A at the time. And he had a chance, and you could tell then that he was going to be a really good hitter. He's and, short and to what, the ball. Yeah, with pop. he was even then, and, and had the pop, and, and what a career he has put together. Three-two pitch to Canerco. It through the hole, a base hit. Ramirez did a stutter step halfway to make sure Taylor did not get it. So runners at the corners, one out here for Chicago. Make sure you join the Mariners 2015 lineup by making a deposit on season tickets. Reserve a great spot right now for just 100 bucks per seat. What's more, when you make a deposit, you're going to have a chance to test drive season ticket locations this season and experience Mariners season ticket holder benefits, including access to special events, discounts, and more. For more info, visit Mariners.com slash 15. Catcher Tyler Flowers stands in. Runners at the corners. One out. Flowers grounded out to Taylor at short. First at bat. Off the end of the bat. Flip over to Taylor. And got him! Oh, man, what a double play! On a slow roller, they made it happen! And keeps Chicago off the board. Good stretch by Morales. Robin Ventura going out. It's like he's going to challenge the call by Marvin Hudson. One nothing Mariners. We celebrate Lou Pinella. Dan Wilson tells a great story taking us back to the season uh, 2001. The day we got back, we had a chance to clinch the division. And Lou was concerned because he didn't want a big celebration amidst what was going on in our country at the time. And I will never forget being called into the office as a player representative with Pac Illich and Lou. And he said, this is what I want to do. If we clinch the thing tonight, I want to take all the players out on the, home, on, on the pitcher's mound and take a knee and say a prayer for everyone who's lost their lives and for the families of those affected by 9-11. And then I want to take a flag and walk it around the infield and stand at home plate for the fans. To me, it was one of the greatest managerial moves he ever made. It had nothing to do with baseball. Because he had compassion. And we clinched it that night. And we went out on the mound. We said a prayer. And one of the classiest things I've ever seen in baseball, we carried a flag around to a standing ovation here at Safeco Field. What a moment. And if you were there, I'm sure you'll never forget it.
I'll never forget it as a player. Moving story told by Dan Wilson yesterday at the at the uh, luncheon honoring Lou Pinella, talking about September of 2000, uh, 2001. Boy, I was in New York. I think I lived there, and when that happened, I'll never forget that either. As this one driven down the left field by Vicedo with room, and he made the catch. And it looks like he hurt himself. Two down. That's a heck of an effort. We'll take a look at it. We've talked about it before. Not much room from the foul territory as he goes into the wall. Oof, that wrist and the elbow, the shoulder. shoulder. The, oh yeah, my God! Like a wrist. Oh uh, my hip and a knee. And oh man. Two outs. Well, they call him Tank. He's a tough guy, but you can see him flexing that wrist, going a little, a little bit more tape on that probably. Oh yeah. But Dan's story was tremendous. Well, I was, was here for story. it, and 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 he he's absolutely right. The fans that were here, um, it was special. It was it was a special moment here in this and, ballpark. And a great, just wonderful thought by uh, by Lou to, yeah. to do that. Hector Noesi is ahead here. 0 and 2 as we begin the third time through the order. Jackson fly to right and a strikeout. Gordon Beckham throws him out. Mariners lead one nothing on the RBI double by Seager back in the fourth inning. And this is indeed a mile oh my night here in Seattle for Mariner fans. As the ball club leads one nothing. Being brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, presenting the Master of Laughter, Sinbad, August 16th. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. And by Ford, we are local. So we look at the time lapse of what happened here today as people get ready to come into the ballpark. As Lou Pinella inducted into the Mariners Hall of Fame. Oh, says Sierra, right fielder. He's going to lead off here in the sixth. Waved by the Jays in early May, picked up by the Sox. So far for James Paxton, just three strikeouts, but eight ground ball outs, including a couple of double plays. And the one that ended the fifth inning, first and third, was a big ground ball to second base, well turned by Cano and Taylor. And Slow roller, too. It huh? was. But you could see how quickly Cano on that backhanded flip with a little something on it. And Taylor, of course, with the strong arm, they were able to turn it. And for Paxton, we, we've talked about it with, before. He can constantly get himself out of trouble because he's always just a ground ball away, and he can typically get it when he needs it. And he's been efficient tonight too. Just 57 pitches as he starts here in the sixth inning. Ernest sent seventh, seven men to the plate in the fourth inning. 
Got an RBI double by Seeger, and that came with two outs. And again, another door opener, Mike. An E4 on Beckham. Then a base hit by Morales, and then the double by Seeger. Well, that's something that we've seen on this homestand against the Braves, and now the White Sox. When they've made a mistake, the Mariners have taken advantage of it, and, and that's something that you like to see. Stringing together those hits can be difficult at times, but if they're going to help you out, you certainly want to take advantage, and the Mariners have done that on the homestand. Two and two. Foul. Almost a great play. Got a glove on it. Paxton still in some sunlight. A sliver of sunlight down on the infield. 18 play for Cano. So Sierra is going to bring up Gordon Beckham. We take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Slip Country USA. Wrap it up with the Sox tomorrow. Then the Blue Jays come to town. Three night games. Felix on the mound on Monday. And look for Erasmo Ramirez has been officially announced. But look for him to start tomorrow's game. Travel day Thursday. Go to Detroit. Then Philly. Then Boston. Gordon Beckham grounded out to third. His first at bat. Next home stand for the Mariners will feature three games with the Texas Rangers. Three games with the Washington Nationals. And then we're into September. Where'd the season go, Mike? Send that at APB. Yeah, we're, we're in the fun part of it now. Absolutely. The guys are playing well, and they are in it. Meaningful baseball. It's good to see. Earlier today, as you're tracking your wild card situation, Toronto beat Detroit 3-2. Cleveland took out the Yankees behind Corey Kluber three nothing. Right now, and Kansas City went five nothing over San Francisco. And shoots one through the hole. They set. Beckham. The one out single here in the sixth. Mariners team store fan dream stakes contest going on for just a few more days. When you stop by any of the five convenient Mariner team stores to sign up, you're automatically entered to win one of ten great prizes, including authentic Mariners apparel, a photo with a player, or even a chance to throw out the first pitch. Entry deadline's coming up Monday. Be sure to stop by Mariners team store to enter. Top of the order, Yuri Garcia. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out to short. Beat the Cubs for nothing. Tampa Bay now at 57 and 59. We started today five and a half back in the wild card chase. Mariners and the Yankees started today a half game. Five ball. Angels lead at home against Boston two nothing. Top of the sixth. Oakland 4 1 over Minnesota. And that's in the bottom of the fourth. And here's something that will make Lloyd McClendon happy, Dave. If the Mariners can get the win tonight, they will even up their record at home at 500, which is something he's been talking about. They need to play better at home. And so far, 4 0 on the home stand, looking to get their fifth win tonight. Well, that'd be huge. Well, he knows if you're going to continue to play well and be in it in September and hopefully get into the postseason in October, if that's going to happen, you have to play well at home. And he's talked about that throughout the year. So now they have a chance to get back to 500 and hopefully get over that mark by the end of the home stand. Mariners have done the job on the road 31 and 23. That's more than he could ask. No, no, that's great. Two and two. Mariners current homestand 4 0, the best start to a homestand this season. First time Mariners have won four consecutive games at home this season. 2 2. Swing and a miss. Here's Zanino. And everybody's going to be safe. No, he's out. The batter is out. A uh, runner took off. I wasn't watching the runner. Right. Beckham will move down a second.
Well, with the runner, it, if, you're, if you're wondering with the runner, at first you see it all the time. If, if nobody's on base or first base isn't occupied and you see guys strike out, the ball is in the dirt, you'll see him running, which is what the hitter did on that one. But in that case, with Garcia hitting in a runner at first, you don't have to catch the ball cleanly on a strikeout. But Beckham has the opportunity to move up, which is what he did when the ball ended up getting behind Mike Zanino. Moved up on a wild pitch. Right. Two away. Good breaking ball. He has good stuff. When we talked about that in his first outing, when he went four and a third, he threw 83 pitches, though, so it wasn't quite as sharp as he is tonight. He stopped out at 97 miles an hour with his fastball tonight and a really good curveball. This is his fourth strikeout. He hasn't walked anybody. Again, two double plays turned behind him. The Piazza behind <laughs> 0 and 2. 96 right at the bottom of the strike zone. Paxton throwing a heck of a ball game here. He's got a one nothing lead, a fourth inning RBI double by Kyle Seeger. 0-2 pitch here. Cano with the back hand throws across his body, scooped by Morales. <laughs> Nicely done down there at first base. Lloyd McClendon said Morales is energized by playing at first base. Why well, wanted to give him an opportunity here tonight? He makes a nice dig. One nothing Mariners. Fourth inning and James Paxton making it stand up right now as he duels with Hector Noesi. Ackley, Cano, and Morales here in the home sixth. Less than so far tonight, a pop up to short and fly to center. One to Dustin. Hit on the money. Base hit, Ackley. The Ack attack with another base hit. As we tell you about Seattle Mariners baseball here in Root Sports, being brought to you by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By BECU offering convenient access to online and mobile banking. Get info and join at BECU.org. By BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast. And by Jack in a Box. Right now at Jack in a Box, try Jack's Spicy Chicken Club Combo for just $4.99 plus tax. A good start to the inning, Ackley with the base hit. He's now one for three. He's really been hot. 354 average since the All Star break. Been a big part of the recent success of the Mariners and the runs that they've scored. Fly ball, left center field. It'll be Diaza. 
for out number one. Pinella wore that jersey for the Cubs, and here's what happened. Kansas City early. A 5-0 win. James Big Game Shields. A complete game four hit five strikeout performance. Mariners a game back. The Yankees game and a half back. The Yankees lost. And the Angels right now lead Boston 2-0. Bottom of the six. Garrett Richardson no-no through six. They've been struggling lost. lately. I think they've mm -hmm. lost three or four in a row now. Bull hole said a two run double in the first. Four, and four consecutive losses by the Angels. Yeah, there you go. They've been struggling, and I know that Trout has been too. So yeah, he was hitting 174 ish over about a week span there. Yeah, and, and we know as he goes, they go. So good news for everybody else trying to catch him. Bad news for the Mariners. Kansas City, Billy Butler's homer in the last couple of days, so he's starting to heat up. DH for the Kansas City Royals. Talked to a lot of people with the Mariners, and they said this guy is going to hit. And it's a, everybody's hoping it's about to kick in. Kendrick Morales, big base hit in the fourth inning. Seager followed great. with an RBI double. It was great to see how excited Lou got on that base hit. Again, the White Sox with the shift on him, Morales hitting him. Morales is base hit. He had a ball hard line drive into left field the other way. And he really enjoyed watching him beat the shift that way. <laughs> he was thrilled. Oh, I love his comment. Major League hitters want to take advantage of it. Hit the ball the other way. <laughs> one to <and> one. <laughs> Runner goes. Ooh. Ball's fouled off. Picked a good pitch to run on. Off speed pitch. Looked like he had a good jump. I think he would have been able to steal that base. Good to see him running. I agree. I that, that can be a big part of his game, especially now that he's getting on base a lot. The way that he's swinging the bat. And make the rest of the lineup job a little bit easier to score runs if you steal some bases, and he's certainly capable. One out, one on. Mariners lead one nothing. James Paxton has struck out four. Beneficiary of two double plays hasn't walked anybody. Giving up no runs on four hits. This yes. might oh, work. Get there. The get bag. there. Oh. <laughs> that was close to being one of the few infield hits that Morales is going to get. <laughs> you can see him smiling about it. <laughs> well said. <laughs> uh, the over under. <laughs> he would have hit it. Not a bad kick. Congratulations to Hisashi Iwakuma on his win last night. Gives yeah. him 10 wins. He's 10 and 6. So the Mariners have three pitchers who've won 10 or more games. You got Young and Kuma at 10 and Felix at 12. And Elias, when he comes back, he'll have a good chance. Yes, to get there. Mariners one of three teams with three starters with at least 10 wins. Tigers have Porcello, Scherzer, and Verlander. Price had 11 wins at Tampa. Then the Dodgers with Granke, Kershaw, and Ryu. Two balls and two strikes. Mariners have won four consecutive ball games, seven of the last ten. Now lead the season series with the White Sox, three games to two, and Felix Hernandez who pitch Monday against the Toronto Blue Jays. Two and two. Ackley takes off, hits, hit well. Right field and getting back is Ackley as that ball jumped off the bat and Sierra, a couple of steps towards the line, makes the play. 
two outs. And Ackley moving a lot during that sequence. Say goodbye to Monday Blues. And a load of Mariners baseball being true to the blue. Make sure you join us Monday for BECU Family Night. When King Felix and the Mariners take on the Blue Jays at 710, select view level seats. It's only 10 bucks. Make plans to start your week right by getting tickets right now. Mariners.com. Seeger drove in the only run. Two out RBI double in the fourth. White Sox will keep the shift on with Kyle hitting. Kyle's base hit was down in the right field corner. He's the club in RBI's second home runs to Zanino. He has 17 home runs. Kyle's already passed his RBI total from what he had all of last year. Here we are in game 116. Hackley runs again. Throw down the second. Got him. Out to oh. six. Dustin didn't think so. And Lloyd's coming out of the dugout. I think Dustin thought that he was able to get his foot underneath the tag. And here comes Lloyd. Second base umpire is Toby Basner. Here's the tag coming down. Basner in the way. Can't really see. Did he? That's a hard. There has to be a better angle, I think. Take another look. Wasn't the greatest tag. He tagged him all the way into the inside on top of his foot. It looked like it was on top of his foot as his base. He was hitting the base. I think he's safe. We'll take another look. That is close, but Aaron Lloyd's not going to challenge it, so they're going to call him out. That'll do it for the Mariners as we go to the seventh. As they try to win their fifth consecutive ball game, and we'd like to welcome Country Vision cable subscribers from Junction City, Oregon, between Eugene and Corvallis. Thank you for rooting on the Seattle Mariners and all of us at Root Sports and the Mariners. Appreciate your support. Had a lot of good looks yesterday at Portland, Oregon. Salute the folks in Junction City, Oregon. That says it all right there. The Country Vision. Gonna have uh, get a big country night coming up here. What? It's fireworks. Outing. Here's a drive to right field. Down the line. Could be. It is trouble. It's off the bat of Abreu. Throw by Chavez. It is offline. A double. Leading off the seventh by Jose Abreu was 29th double. I'm not sure that he knew that he hit the ball down the right field line because after he hit it he was just kind of jogging as if it was going to go foul and he didn't start running hard until the ball hit the ground. Strong throw by Andy a little bit offline. He's fortunate to get into second base. Takes over the team lead in that category. He had been tied with Connor Gillespie. And with that double we're going to get some action out in the pen so far Paxton 72 pitches 53 strikes for him. He threw 83 pitches in his first outing coming off the disabled list. Trent Jewett getting off the phone with the guys out in the pen. And Brandon Maurer is going to start cranking it up.
There's Brendan in. Here's a dangerous hitter in Diane Viciato. Opposite field power the last two nights. Sixth inning on Thursday, a two run shot to right. Right center and right field last night. In the fourth, as you look at the comparison of the two starters. Chavez takes care of this. Abreu tags long throw. <laughs> and Indy still got a little something, doesn't he? He does such a great job fundamentally on everything that he does. He knew that this was going to be a long throw, and he wanted to get as much into it as possible. And he stays behind that fly ball to put everything he had into it and air mails it all the way to third as Abreu will slide in safely, but a good throw from Indy. Tying right at third, one out now for Alexi Ramirez. Well, James needs a strikeout. He hasn't had one in a while, so he needs to get a strikeout here. Four strikeouts in the game for him. Struck out the side in the first inning. The next strikeout was in the sixth for out number two. As Ramirez checks his swing. Mariners will bring their infield in. Trying to protect that one run lead. This helps a little bit. Taylor and, and Cano and Seager can play back a couple of steps, not have to play all the way in with the Bray running at third. There's a good pitch, good off speed pitch from Paxton. Ramirez 0 for 4 in last night's game as Mauer continues to heat up. Like see 1 for 4 on Thursday. Tough hitter. Tie ball game is that one. Bang off the pad. And Ramirez, a stand up RBI double, picks up his 58th RBI and his 24th double. And it looks like that will be it. Well, it's an off speed pitch, one of the few that James left up in the zone. And Ramirez, we talked about it. He's an aggressive hitter. Anything that's up in the zone like that, he's going to take a hack at. So a mistake from, from James. Wasn't able to get away with that one. Well, James Paxton pitches into the seventh inning, leaves in a 1 1 ball game. And when we come back, Lou Pinella going into the Mariners Hall of Fame will look at one of his more famous tirades when we get back. He's getting after umpires. 2002 going after C.B. Buckner. And Lou, <laughs> plenty upset. Is Johnny Moses? It's amazing he didn't make more significant contact. I don't think C.B. Buckner's helping his situation at all with that smirk that he has on his face. Wow, what an episode this is. Lou at his demonstrative best. He wasn't kidding about his Billy Martin influence. That John McClendon coming out trying to calm him down. That only made him worse. Well, again, I think the CB with that smirk on his face, <laughs> Lou was not having any of it. That probably set him off more than anything, I, I think, right? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Still going with the hat. This was also the game where he actually picks up the base and throws it out the right field. 
Here's Kanerko. Brendan Maurer now takes over, swinging a miss. Who could forget this? I think that throw cost him a few days on the trainer's table. <laughs> <laughs> There, go get it. Here's another one for you. <laughs> you know, he might as well just empty the bag, right? I was here for that. It was great. The fans what, were What, do you remember it. the play? Oh, I don't remember the play, but I, I remember Lou. <laughs> it's a close play and a force out at first and a lot of run to score. He had a vehement disagreement. <laughs> Well, it looks like he's sitting on the fastball. Well, that's that what makes it so difficult with Maurer. You have to guess right with him because you cannot look for the fastball and adjust to his breaking ball. Again, we've seen him hit 100 miles an hour this year. He's typically 95 to 98 miles an hour. On two pitch. Lexi Ramirez has tied the ball game. RBI double after Jose Abreu doubled into the right field corner. That was the sixth hit by Chicago. Skied in the infield. Cano is there. Two away. For James Paxton, a good outing again. Six and a third, six hits, one run. It was earned. Didn't walk anybody. A good sign for him. Four strikeouts, 77 pitches, 56 of those for strikes. He is responsible for Ramirez out at second base. No crime giving up a run. No, I thought he threw the ball great. It's really good tonight. Very encouraging. Tyler Flowers. Ball one to the Chicago catcher. He's over two. Garrett Richards had a no hitter going through six. Gives up a leadoff single in the seventh to Dustin Pedroia. Angels lead 2 0. Oakland 6 2 over Minnesota, bottom five in Oakland. Got a 1 1 pitch here to Flowers. Got ball to Taylor. And he throws him out. White Sox tie it up, a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Home seventh, seventh inning stretch coming up in a 1 1 game. Stretch is brought to you by Washington's Lottery and the Department of Imagination. 
What would you do if you won? Great night here in Seattle with spectacular weather, a lot of emotion, a lot of love and good fellowship as Lou Pinella goes into the Mariners Hall of Fame earlier this evening. Hey, fans, follow every Mariners game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, score, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download from the App Store or visit Mariners.com today. Really enjoyed our visit with Lou here, Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, and Root Sports Pro. 40,122 of Lou's best friends here in Seattle. Twilight time starting to move in here in Seattle. And it's just a fabulous stretch of weather that we're enjoying here this month of August. See if the Mariners can get the lead back. They had a 1 0 lead in the fourth, took it to the seventh, courtesy of Kyle Seaver's RBI double with two outs back and forth. Mir is tied it with the seventh inning. Double scoring uh, Jose Abreu. Speaking of Kyle, he'll lead things off. Still continuing his hot hitting here at Safeco Field. Here's some numbers for you. Since June 14th, Kyle's hitting 417 with 13 runs scored, nine doubles, six home runs, 26 RBIs, and nine walks. A couple stolen bases in 28 games here at Safeco Field. He has done some damage in this ballpark. Oh. Wesley now it's time called no Wesley into the seventh inning. He went seven in his last start against Texas. Back in August 4th. Get deep in the games. One, two, three, his last four games. White Sox keep the shift on with Kyle hitting. Overall this year at Safeco for Kyle hitting 346. And 14 of his 17 home runs have been here at home. Foul back. Now Wesley has a win over the Mariners earlier this year. It was back on the 6th of July in Chicago. He went six and two thirds, a five hit, two walk, five strikeout, pitching in 88 pitches, a one nothing victory. One two. Ball two. Two two pitch for ball three. Well, let's see if Noessi feels that good about his fastball. He has tonight. He's throwing a lot of fastballs. Kyle now count in his favor three and two. See if Noessi wants to challenge him. And he does. Fastball inside. Three two. Popped it up. Long run. Coming over is Garcia to make the play. Check in with Angie Mentink. What do you have, Angie? Guys, the Toronto Blue Jays uh, come to town next. Yesterday, they lost a half a game. Uh, the Mariners and the Yankees both won yesterday, so they were a game and a half behind the Royals. Today, they did uh, need extra innings, but in 10, they take care of the Detroit Tigers, and they spoil Max Scherzer's bid to become the first AL pitcher with 14 wins. Now, by the way, guys, think about this with the Tigers. With their loss tonight, the Royals just a game and a half behind the Tigers now in the Central. So uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, Toronto Blue Jays coming in, and uh, again, they are have already won tonight. All right, Angie, thank you. Lots to get excited about in this stretch drive here in early August. Want to know to Mike Zanino, strikeout walk so far. Zanino, his second opposite field home run last night of Seattle City Light Power Play. I thought he put a really good swing on this pitch. 2 0 is the count, and he gets a fastball on the outside corner. It's about seven rows deep. 
A three run homer for Zanino. Just got a piece of that one. As we mentioned earlier, and he caught a break if the wind had maybe been blowing out towards left instead of across. He might have had a he potentially get had a three homer night. He had two other balls that smoked. His 18 home runs ties him for the major league lead with catchers. As a Rocco from Cincinnati with 18 also. One and two. Ramirez can't get it. Base hit. One out base runner for the Mariners. That gives Logan Morrison an opportunity here. And he gets the fastball in the middle of the plate. Up right over the glove of Ramirez. Logan 0 for 2 tonight. Starting to get some action out in the White Sox bullpen. The Wesley now 85 pitches. He's thrown a lot of strikes. 60 strikes out of the 85 pitches. Javi Guerrero is getting ready. There's a double play ball right here. And that'll do it for the Mariners in the seventh. 1-1 one, one score. So we head to the eighth here in this lovely night here in Seattle. White Sox and the Mariners. Hi, everyone. Angie Mentink here at the Ford Sports Desk. It's a Lou Pinella Hall of Fame night, and this guy is everywhere. He's up on the uh, Mariner Vision in between innings. He's uh, down on the field. He's up in our booth, and he's also in our AT&T fan photos of the game. Tweet your photos to hashtag Mariners fan photo for a chance to have it be shown. That was Matthew, guys, and that's apparently a fair ball. Unreal. So take another look at it. Gets the bunt down. Boy, self defense, huh? Kyle was playing deep. Didn't really have a chance to make the play. I think even if he picks it up cleanly with his bare hand, I doubt that he would have had much of a play. Smart play by Sierra. Lead off base hit. Sierra Beckham and Garcia here in the eighth. Wants a good one. Morales throws to Cano. Sacrifice 3 4. Is that the first time we've seen consecutive bunts get down fair? I think so. The first one worked, but that, that wouldn't call it textbook, but it worked for Sierra. The one by Beckham was perfect sacrifice bomb. Gillespie. Looks like he's going to pinch it for Garcia. 
And Rick Wakes, the pitching coach, making a trip out to the mound, having a conversation with Brandon Mauer. Must be one for three in last night's ball game, having a really good year. Seventh in the American League at 313 batting. So far tonight, the White Sox two for seven with runners in scoring position. They come up with here. So Gillespie will pinch hit for Garcia. He'll stay in the game and play at third. Brandon Bauer saving pitch his way out of this jam here. All one. Inside to Gillespie. Three thirteen hitter, twenty eight doubles, four homers, and thirty nine runs back there. On the outside corner, two of them. Well, it gives you an idea of the conversation with Rick Waits a 2 0 change up off the plate. I think if they want a Gillespie to expand the hitting zone, hit a pitch off the plate away, let him swing, but I don't think he's going to give in to him. And another change up for a strike. How about that? Diaz is on deck. One for base hit, a sacrifice bunt, now three and one here. So Gillespie pinch hitting in the eighth. Three and two. And cut fastball in on his hands. Outfield straight away, not deep for Gillespie. Charlie Verbus getting loose in the pen. Swing and a miss. That's a huge strikeout. Brandon Maurer coming up big. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Man, really good pitching. Give Mike Zanino some credit. A lot of off-speed pitches in the changeup. He saved a good fastball. 96 miles an hour for the 3-2 pitch. I think Gillespie probably a little doubt in his mind if he was going to see a fastball. A weak swing as Brandon throws it by him. Good sequence of pitches. Well executed by Maurer. Brings up. Alejandro Diaz, he's one for three. If you have hit before. Way out front. Mariners got on top in the fourth inning, a two out RBI double by Kyle Seeger. Seventh inning, a one out RBI double by Ramirez. Now Mauer trying to pitch himself out of a tough spot here with two outs and go ahead run at second. Oh, another good pitch. Four oh, two. They look his last pitch. It was like a slider. 88 miles an hour. And two Sierra at second. Oh, two pitch from Maurer. Bounce foul. <laughs> We've certainly been a big uh, change, Mike, from the beginning of the season. High stress situation here for Maurer late in the ball game. Well, he's even talked about it. He likes pitching out of the bullpen, and it seems to suit him. 
and with all the success he's had out of there we're seeing him in late innings just like this one. A little bit more here lately with Lloyd McClendon. Trusting him. He's earned it. He's earned it. You're right. Oh, 2 pitch. Had to air it out. Missed. 97 miles an hour. Well, oh, to show him the fastball off the plate away. Try to speed him up a little bit. Probably comes back with his changeup. Maybe the slider. One and two. Cano one hop. Brandon Mauer, Sterling work, eighth inning, pitches out of a situation to keep this a one-one ball game. Root Sports being brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. Mariners going for their fifth consecutive win. It would be their eighth in the last 11. They get something going here in the eighth inning with Taylor Chavez and Jackson against Hector Nuesi. Strike one to Taylor, who's 0 for 2. Chris has hit safely in all 10 of his starts. 0 for 2 tonight. Good time for him to check in with a base hit right here. Good slider. 0 and 2. Connor Gillespie will take over at third. Pinch hit for Garcia in the top of the eighth inning, so he'll stay in the game at third base. 87 pitches, 63 strikes for the Wesley. Ball. Ramirez, everybody's safe. There's Taylor's aboard. Good start to the eighth inning. Base hit. Take a look at our cores. Light, hold, hard, facts. The numbers on Mr. Pinella's career. Club record in win, seven winning seasons, four playoff appearances, three division titles, twice manager of the year in the American League. Manella earlier tonight going into the Mariners Hall of Fame with a wonderful speech. Let's see if any Chavez can get the bunt down here. Gillespie playing in on the grass at third. Indy team best five sacrifices. Medina getting loose in the Mariner pen. Foul. 
Rodney also getting loose just in case the Mariners take the lead. Red Sox have taken a 3 2 lead in Anaheim. That's in the bottom of the seventh inning. Back to the dive is Taylor. Last time the Wesley pitched into the eighth inning was back on the 24th of July at Minnesota. But seven and two thirds picked up the win. One one. Fielder Luciano really close to the line for Chavez and not deep. There's the bunt, gets down to Wesley. Goes to the second baseman back up. So Andy Chavez gets the job done. Sacrifice one fours. We take a look at our Geico this date in MLB history as we salute Lou Pinella joining Alba Davis, Dave Niehaus, Steve Buner. Edgar Martinez, Randy Johnson, Dan Wilson, and Ken Griffey Jr. in the Mariners Hall of Fame. Speaking of Jr. tonight, and Dave Parker, Ron Oster, and Jay Beckley went into the Reds Hall of Fame. That's why Jr. was not here tonight. And Robin Matura out of the dugout. Looks like he's going to make a pitching change. The Wesley so far, 92 pitches, 66 strikes. Really pitched well again against the Mariners, and he will make the change. It's a pitching change, Robin Ventura coming out. He's going to lift the Wesley through a nice ball game here tonight. While we have the opportunity, let's relive one heck of a moment. Lou Pinella in Cleveland. That was in the late 90s. This is the hat kicking incident. And the umpire's just sitting there and digging it all in. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> that he never pulled a groin muscle or threw out a knee or a hip. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> the glove over his face at first base. And there's Lee Ilya, one of his best buddies from Albany High School in Philadelphia. Lee, the hitting coach here for a long time, was hitting coach for that 95 team. He told some good stories yesterday as well. He's telling one now. Yeah. <laughs> That's great <laughs> you to see tell. him. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he was a big help to you, right, Lee? Lee yeah, he was a big help to me and Jay, uh, Tino, all of us. Uh, yeah, he helped us all out. Good hitting coach, good baseball man. Working for the Braves organization right now. Javi Guerra takes over. See if the Mariners can get to him. His first tip is going to be Austin Jackson. Seeing him. Good fastball. Use a cutter and a curveball. Occasional slider from him. Also has a split. Well, Hector Nowessi pitched well again against the Mariners. Pitched well in Chicago and, and did it again today. Seven and a third, only five hits, one run. It was unearned. A walk, four strikeouts, 92 pitches, 66 of those for strikes. So a good outing for Nowessi. Maybe he has found a home. Austin Jackson runner at second one out in a 1 1 game and trying to win their fifth consecutive game and eighth in the last 11 and 
in doing so if they can pull off the win, get their home record to 31 and 31. Not many opportunities for him tonight, hitting with runners in scoring position, just one for two on the night. Jackson one for one against Garrett. There's Taylor at second. So far with the Mariners, Jackson three for six runners in scoring position with an RBI. Stairs. To one pitch. Moving away from him could not catch up to him. Like, yeah, it looked like a good cutter off the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. Strikes out. Two away. Two down with the runner in second. Step up to the plate, hit one out of the park with savings on Sound Transit. Rethink your commute and visit SoundTransit.org. Our hottest hitter the Mariners have, Dustin Ackley, coming to the plate. One for three tonight. Ackley 0 for 1 against Javi Guerra. Strike 1. Taylor at second with two down. Guerra claimed off of waivers late March by the Sox from the Dodgers. A 1. A 2. Another cutter throwing a lot of cut fastballs. A couple of them to Jackson to get the strikeout, and that one in under the hands of Ackley. Shading Ackley towards the left field line. It's Vucieta, the left fielder. Going two. Did he go? He did go as they check down the third base umpire Hunter Wendell Stat. And the Mariners are gone in the eighth. Score tied at 1 1.
headed to the ninth. It is Lou Pinella Hall of Fame night. Hi, everyone. Angie Mentank here. And again, Lou is everywhere tonight. Uh, they even got his name on the dirt in the infield. We saw him photobomb an earlier photo, and we get this AT&T fan photo from... Uh, excuse me. Uh, this is not from Caitlin. This one's from Keith, and uh, Keith is just hanging out with Lou out in right field. Remember to tweet your photos to hashtag Mariners Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. All right, guys, back upstairs to you. All right, Angie, thank you very much. As we go to the top of the ninth, new pitchers, Uravis Medina. A 2 2 9 ERA, 38 strikeouts, 18 walks, more opponents hitting just 187 off of Medina. Good fastball. He'll be around 95 miles an hour with a hard slider. Guess who he gets the face here in the ninth inning? We got Jose Abreu, Diane Vicieto, and Lexi Ramirez, a guy. And he knuckled his, uh, buckled his knees last night for the third out in the eighth inning. Abreu, one for three tonight, doubled and scored the one run for the White Sox. Powerful right hand hitter, American League leader in home runs, RBIs, and slugging. Jose Abreu. Strike one. He certainly was feeling good last night after that one uh, better performance with Ramirez. Yeah, yeah, he totally collapsed him with his breaking ball, and he coming here with Abreu at the plate and throwing two sliders in a row to get ahead of him quickly. 0 and 2. All two strikes. Three, four, and five here for the White Sox, top of the ninth. Mariners in the home ninth will have Cano Morales and Seager, three, four, and five. This kid can hit. He called it. Got the big batting average. He's got the powers. Diving and runs. The second hit tonight. Don't miss the final fireworks night of this season. Friday, August 29th. Mariners and the Nationals. They square up at 7:10. Then after the game, we're going to pay tribute to the Emerald City. Skyline's going to be lit up with spectacular fireworks set to a playlist that celebrates Seattle's iconic music scene. Visit Mariners.com to pick up your tickets for this fun family event. Deal with the opposite field power here. I am Vicieto. Power in general. We've seen it going opposite field the last two nights. It's got 16 home runs. Right field will stay in the yard and be playing deep to me. It's there to make the easy play. Big out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Here's Ramirez. Lexi two for three tonight. Drove in the Sox only run in the seventh inning. If he starts him with a slider, we've talked about it with Ramirez. He's an aggressive hitter, wants to hit the fastball early in the count. There it is, good fastball. Two seam fastball, had some run to it.
Seeger plays a nice hop, gets a Cano. There's your double play. Third double play turn tonight. Another fine inning by Uribis Medina. Chance of the Mariners to win it in the home ninth. 1 1 ball game. yesterday thinking about what was in store for them against the Indians because Corey Kluber was on the mound and uh, Corey Kluber performed. He ends up striking out 10 Yankees and uh, actually combined with the bullpen they end up blanking the Yankees. 3 nothing is the final there. Next up the Toronto Blue Jays. They lost a half a game yesterday but they maintain the pace today in the final in 10 innings 3 to 2. And uh, Rymel with the walk off RBI double in the 10th inning. And as for the Royals, who own that second wild card spot, well, they just won't lose. They have won six straight now in nine of the last 10, 5 0 over the Giants. So as things sit right now down in the wild card, you've had some time to take it in. Mariners one game back of those Kansas City Royals, of course, pending the outcome of tonight's game. Guys? All right, Angie, thank you. Fans fired up, 40,122. They're going to have Cano, Morales, and Seeger, 3, 4, and 5 against Javi Guerra here in the ninth inning. Chance for the Mariners to win it. They do. It'll be their fifth consecutive win, eighth in the last 11 games, and get their home record to 500. Cano tonight started as the leading hitter in the American League. He's 0 for 3 with a run scored. It was an unearned run back in the fourth inning. He reached on an error by the second baseman Gordon Beckham on what would have been the third out of the inning. Morales single to left, secret double to right, and that was the Mariners' run. All the outfielders for the White Sox playing deep. Canerco, the first baseman on the line, trying to take the double away. And oh, against Javi Guerrez, one for one. One oh to Robbie. It's a strike and one. I'm off ball and two strikes. See the location of that last pitch, 95 miles an hour in the middle of the plate. Robinson hoping he gets that pitch again. It's right there for him. Is ready the one two to Cano. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> Jim and Watts, look at that. <laughs> they glove in front of his face. Two and two. Throws over one hop. That's a big time play. Alexi Ramirez throws out Cano one away. And that is unfortunate for Cano. It looks like the ball comes up for him, and when it comes up, it makes an easier backhand for him. If it stays down, he'll have a tougher time making the play. We'll take a look at it. Ball's hit hard on the ground, then it comes up right there. Bigger bounce for him, easier play. Great play by Ramirez and Canerco over at first. 
But the ball comes up high enough. You can see we had it low. It stays down low. That's a difficult play, but up there he can get rid of it quickly. And how about Paul Canerco, the veteran, still getting it done over at first base. Good play all the way around. Yes, it was. Here's Morales, one for three. First time Morales is facing Javi Guerra. See Rodney getting loose. Morales, of course, also for his first home run in his second stint with the Mariners. A one. Hit the other way. That is a fair. Dendris Morales is aboard with the winning run. He tried that earlier in the game and it ended up foul, but this one stays fair. An infield hit. Pinch runner, they're going to bring Chris DeNorfia in. Brad Miller came out first, but then DeNorfia came out. He'll pinch run. We'll take a look at it. Fastball up in the zone, just a late swing for Morales, but with the shift on, nobody over on the left side of the infield. Gillespie, the third baseman, had to dive for this ball just to keep it from being a double. Can't even see an infielder in the picture. Hunter Wendelstadt, the third base umpire, easy call for him. And you're right, saving a double with the dive. Yeah. Chris. To Norfia. Down there with first base coach Chris Woodward. Eric Surkamp going to come into the ball game. See if the Mariners can win it when we come back. Mr. Lou Pinello. But truthfully, we're going to go up to your cantina and have a couple of services. Wonderful friends, you and your staff are doing just an outstanding job. All the love you bestowed on me. And there he is, one a more fantastic, time. fantastic evening. And well deserved for Lou Pinella. And it would certainly be fitting and just if the Mariners can win this ball game on his night. <laughs> well, again, for Kyle, 14 of his 17 home runs hit here at Safeco Field this year. Leads the club in RBIs. And you have the pinch runner, DeNorfia, pinch running for Morales, who had an infield hit. One out here in the night. Eric Surkamp takes over. High ERA for him. He's had his struggles. Only hitting 277. He's given up three home runs and some brief work. First time he's going face to face with Kyle Seeger. We've seen from Kyle in his three years here with the Mariners. Not unlike him to do something dramatic here in this situation. Hey, 14th inning last year, tied it up at the Grand Slam against these guys. 1 0. That's 
Hempstead, 1-1. A 268 hitter and against lefty pitching this year with a homer and 16 runs batted in. Another area that he has improved being against left handed pitching. On one pitch. Red Sox and Angels now tied at 3 3 top nine. Mike Trout a game tying home run in the eighth. And it was an opposite field shot. I bet it was another low pitch, right? Yeah, down, yeah. <laughs> we talked about it. The Angels go as he goes, and it looks like he's starting to heat up again. Been struggling lately. One and one. He's going to take him right to the bag. Double play. Extra frames here at Safe Coat Field in a 1 1 ball game. A four game set with the Chicago White Sox tied at 1 1. Of course, Banquet and the Wildland Firefighter Foundation support the brave firefighters who protect us. A donation of 25 cents. For each case, of course, Banquet purchase between now and August 31st will go to the Wildland Firefighter Foundation. Please help us protect our West and support our Wildland firefighters. Mendo Rodney, we're going to take over here in the 10th inning. Finish up this series with the White Sox tomorrow. And then the homestand will conclude with three with the Blue Jays, our century link link to what's next. Good pitching matchups, too. Felix on the mound for game one against Drew Hutchinson. Jay Happ against Chris Young. And R.A. Dickey. Those are three 10 game or more winners for the Mariners. Well, obviously not a save situation for Rodney. He has 32 saves on the year, a 2-3-1 ERA, 51 strikeouts and 46 and two-thirds. Only sitting 226 against Fernando. Good fastball anywhere from 94 to 97 miles an hour. And of course the great changeup. Gonna see Paul Canerco leading off in the tenth. Logan Morrison has come on to play at first base for the Mariners. White Sox are two and five in extra inning games, and the Mariners are three and five. The Mariners will no longer have the DH available for him. Morrison was the DH in this game. Denorfia came on to run for Morales, who had been at first base. Rodney, the pitcher, will be in the four hole for the Mariners. There's Canerco. Flowers in Sierra to follow, six, seven, and eight here in the tenth inning. All one to Canerco. One for three tonight.
Erko six for 19 against Fernando Rodney. He's ahead in the count two and zero. Two zero pitch. And their first strike. He got the save in last night's game. His 32nd hit foul pass Joe McEwing, the third base coach. Two and two. Rodney ready with the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Swing and start the 10th. Just a good change up. It's on the outside corner, but this one was elevated. Typically, when Rodney throws his change up, it will be down in the strike zone. A good look at our McDonald's Supermo and how far out in front of that change up Canerco was. There is his changeup will normally be about 80 81 miles an hour. Hit on the button. Ackley cuts it off. It's Tyler Flowers with the base hit. Well, Tyler Flowers didn't want to deal with the changeup, so he hits a first pitch fastball, lines it in the left field. Conversation between Rodney and Cano behind the mound. Pitch hitter. hitter. Yep. Yeah. Dank's going to pinch hit. Jordan Dank's just called up today. Brother of John Dank's, left handed pitcher for, for the Sox. So he'll pinch hit for Moises Sierra. He was called up. Remember last night, Adam Eaton had to leave with an injury. Strained right oblique. He's on a 15 day DL and they called up Banks, who is uh, making yet another appearance with the ball club. It just 098 with a homer and five runs batted in at 21 games, nine starts earlier in the year. And he's the younger brother of White Sox lefty John Danks. John Danks pitching in tomorrow's game tomorrow afternoon. Break one. The catcher out of big lead at first. 0 oh, 2. Back to back change ups. Both of them at the bottom of the strike zone. Good change ups from Rodney. Smart pitching. Top when you come off the bench as a pinch hitter to try to get a fastball early and get some swings in. Rodney throwing a couple of perfect change ups. Charging his Lomo. And he gets the lead runner. Logan Morrison, nice play to get Flowers for out number two. Morrison was, the, yeah, choice. Morrison was the DH, came on to play first base after Denorfia pinch ran for Morales. And here's the key. He comes and gets this right away, fields it cleanly, and makes a strong throw to Taylor, the shortstop out at second base. The lead runner. Brings up second baseman Gordon Beckham. One for two tonight with a sacrifice.
Ball one. Low scoring affair. Mariners. Fourth inning lead. Unearned run. RBI double. Kyle Seeger. Seventh inning. White Sox get an RBI double from Alexi Ramirez. Which is scoring so yeah, runner takes job. off. No throw by Zanino. He had a full step towards second base before Rodney even started to home. We'll take a look at it. I don't think Mike would have had a chance to throw him out even though he couldn't get the handle on it and drops the ball. Too good a jump. 2-0 count here to Beckham. Two outs. There's stolen base for Banks. Ooh, 3-0. Outside the box. Counter Gillespie came on as a pinch hitter for Garcia in the eighth inning and struck out. He's on deck. This is one to Taylor. Oh, goes off his glove. Runner at third will hold. He's six. Well, a couple things I was surprised that Robin Ventura let Beckham hit 3 and 0. Ends up pounding it into the ground. And Taylor, who has been sure handed, comes in to make the play right off the thumb of his glove. Gonna bring up a good hitter in Gillespie. Third error for Taylor. Gillespie 0 for 2 against Rodney. White Sox two for ten with runners in scoring position tonight. Strike one. Forty thousand one twenty two. Watch Mariner baseball and to celebrate Lou Pinella's induction into the Mariners Hall of Fame. A one pitch. Hit hard, base hit, runs going to score, two on Chicago. And Beckham digs his way to third. Connor Gillespie with an RBI. Chicago with the lead now. And for Gillespie, is 30, make that his 40th. Run batted in. Well, the Mariners through the first four games, all of them wins for them, taking advantage of errors. And here's the Columbia Bank difference in the game, and it is Gillespie to give his team the lead here in the tenth inning as he hits a changeup out into right field, taking advantage of the error by the Mariners. Runners at the corners to run in. Here's Diaz. Two one White Sox lead. Up high, one one. Jake Patrika up again. Second time he's been up in the game. Kyle Seeger playing even with the bag at third. Diaz with good speed. Let's take the bun away from him. Check swing, long run for Ackley. He'll shut it down. It's out of play. One and two is the count to Diaz. Two down, a run in, runners at the corners. Beckham at third, Gillespie at first. Center field right at Jackson. And that'll do it. Sox take the lead on the RBI by Gillespie. Coming up for the Mariners. And a do or die now, Mike Zanino. Followed by Logan Morrison. And Chris Taylor.
White Sox lead as they get a run across in the top half of this inning. Lone saves in the American League. White Sox right behind Houston. See if the Mariners can add to that tally here with Zanino, Morrison, and Taylor coming up against Jake Patrishka. For Patrishka, a 2.05 ERA. 44 strikeouts in the 57 innings that he has pitched. Opponents hitting 222 has given up one home run in the 57 innings that he has worked. Pitched well for the White Sox. It was a heavy sinker and a good slider. It'll be Zanino, Morrison, and Taylor due up. Changes defensively. Jordan Danks, who takes over in center field. And VC8 on moves from left field to right field. And Nieto is in left field. Mike Zanino to leave it off. Go on to Mike Z. Move Diaz from center field to left field. Two and one here, Mike. I just need to get him aboard. Well, he tried to tie it. Had a good sure fastball up out over the plate at 95 and put a good swing on it, but missed the pitch. I hit his 18th home run of the season into the right field seats in last night's ball game. Two two. Fly ball right center going over is Danks and the right fielder Viciedo is on this spot as Danks made a long run Viciedo took care of it. I'm wondering if communication was going to be a problem right center field again Danks just called up today. Came in as a pinch runner playing center field but Viciedo handles it out in right center. Brings up Logan Morrison. Started the game with the DH and then moved into first base after Morales was lifted for pinch runner in the ninth inning. Morrison 0 for 1 against Patricia. The middle base hit. Tying runs aboard. Members of 85 refused to lose with Lou in the house. Good way of thinking. Here's Marson checks in. Well, he gets a 95 mile an hour fastball right in the middle of the plate. And for Patricia, lucky that the ball didn't hit him in the back because this is a bullet back up the middle as he squares this up. Good swing. Tom Wilhelmson getting loose in the Mariner pen. Chris Taylor, one for three. And this may do it, and it does. Mariners lose it two to one, ends the win streak at four.
But we're certainly buoyed by the fact that Lou Pinella was in town and went into the Mariners Hall of Fame this evening. It was great to visit with him. It was great to watch him in front of this great crowd of 40,122. Outside of a Mariner win, it really was a great night. Big crowd here. Lou was terrific in his speech tonight. I thought the fans, the ovation they gave Lou was terrific also. Unfortunately, the Mariners offense, which has been really good on the homestand so far, wasn't too good tonight and only scoring the one run. Have a chance to win the series tomorrow, four-game series, and have a chance to win it tomorrow. 2-1 the final. And Mariner post-game programming begins right now with Brad and Bill. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Sox do take this one in at 10 innings. Mariners now 3-6 and six in extra.